Friends, good evening, and welcome to Dazed After Dark. Sorry we're late, man. Damn it. We had a um a person named Jane Smith who volunteered to star all the questions. I set her up as an admin, and for some reason it didn't work, so we'll have to debug that. So once again, I have the challenge of starring the questions, trying to answer it and pay attention. But we're going to get that fixed by next Sunday, and it will make this stream go a hell of a lot smoother. So this is the end of the week where we let our hair down. Any questions or comments that you guys want flashed on the screen? Um, you can ask anything about Scientology, you know, the Hollywood experience, you know, whatever. Those of you that follow the channel, you kind of know the basic areas that we talk about. Feel free to fire away. As you can see down there, please put a couple of question marks. That'll make it easy to see. But when we get Jane Smith in here and we get this thing debugged and she can start the questions, you won't even have to do that anymore. So also, if the word Xenu comes up, we take a hit of our favorite poison, mine being this, or you don't have to partake. We're not encouraging drug use. So calm down, YouTube and censors. Um, but anyway, so let's get started. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to throw them out there and we'll just hang out um, until we all get so wasted we can't go any further. So um, let's see here. Who's in the hizzy? Common queen. Is it too late to call out Xenu? I love you guys. Perfect. Prove it. Poof it. Okay. I'm already kind of stoned, guys. Uh, confession, I took a huge hit before we started, but uh, like I said, this is the chance at the end of the week to relax. So anybody that would like to partake, she said the magic word. Let's get started. Apologies <coughs> to our British mates and such <coughs> where this is a crime, but if you have it, I mean, it's so funny to think that there's people overseas right now that are doing the same thing, particularly in the UK, that are actually committing a crime. Okay, so that's the Xenu out of the way. Who else is in the house? Amy, how you doing? It'll be good to hear and see you, brother. You as well, sister. Um, my mind went AWOL. I haven't seen you forever. God damn it, you better be here. Please confirm. That was written an hour ago. It's good to see you, man. Good evening, Bella. How are you? I think you're asking, um, my friend, who is HG Tudor, right? Because I couldn't quite decipher that. TJ Hoare? I don't know who that is. But if you're asking about HG Tudor, because he comes up a lot on this program. He's a self-aware, narcissistic psychopath, which we've done probably 15 interviews or so. Because a subject of um, narcissist, even though that word gets thrown around so much nowadays, it's almost lost its meaning. He's a person that um, really dives into that subject like no other, in my opinion. And we interview him because the subject of cults, invariably and inevitably, they're run by a narcissistic personality. So to understand that subject is to understand so much about the very subjects we talk about here, not least the cult of Scientology. So that's who H.G. Tudor is. I hope that if that was even your question, what is going down, Purple? My dude, Doug. Purple, I don't know if you're a guy or a girl, but my guy or gal, girl, purple, whoever you may be, let us know. Willie, it's always good to see you, man. I hope we're not using up too much of your data because I know you watch on the phone and you might have limited time, but it's always good to see you, my man. Um, Common, how are you? Okay, we already did that. We're not going to do it a second time. I have a feeling you guys are going to throw around the word Xenu way too much and we're only going to make it through 30 minutes of the stream. See? Peace, dog. Xenu. <laughs> Let's give it five minutes, guys, and answer some questions first or take up some comments. Bella, hi, Doug. My question for you is more like something to be discussed, maybe in another episode. The influence from the scam of Sci yeah, the influence from the scam of Scientology and the nation of Islam. It's so ironic that those two paired up. Obviously, it was for money. Louis Farrakhan, the leader of the Nation of Islam, is basically taking a payout, and he gets 10% of any of the services that all of his hypnotized people take. He started pimping out um, Dianetics and then some of his people have actually gone up the bridge. But obviously Farrakhan knows he's scamming people because he's not like totally unintelligent. He would know that L. Ron Hubbard, the founder of Scientology, is one of the most bigoted and every ist person you can add, you know, racist, homophobic, everything. So um, he didn't look too kindly upon the black man Farrakhan knows that, and yet he's bullshitting his own cult people. Also, um, Reza, uh, uh, there's a whole big story uh, behind that, but we'll, um, whenever you want to ask that question, let me know what you want to 
go into, but that's a whole subject into itself. Well, would you talk to you for, you know, about an hour? Okay. Any other questions here? What do we got? So challenging to do this by myself. We almost had the admin. <laughs> okay. I see your question, BCC. You'd be up next. Um, how did you learn how to play guitar? Was it via lessons or are you self-taught? Well, honestly, I'm not very, I, I got good at the guitar. I can rip solos and stuff, but I had to work super hard. That's part of why I decided to become an actor because I didn't have a natural talent um, in it. Uh, my friends around me, guitar players, they could learn a lot quickly and they had an ear for it. I'm basically tone deaf when it comes to that. And it was only by practicing scales every night for hours on end, being obsessed by it, that I actually did get good at it. But I didn't have a natural talent into it or for it. And that was kind of why I eventually gravitated towards acting because as we talked about earlier, it's something that I was into as a kid. It was something I had a natural talent in, one of the few that I have. And I felt like Therefore, it could be a lifetime endeavor. I could always grow. I would never hit the peak of being bored with it. And that's what got me into that. Um, so yeah, I'm self-taught. I took lessons all the time. I ordered um, these tapes, where, which try to give you perfect pitch. I was um, very obsessed with it. And I get single-minded when I'm into something. So it was only by sheer you know, hard work that I actually learned how to play guitar. But it's not my forte. BCC, what's going down? Are there more humble actors like Martin Landau in Hollywood? Yeah, there are. They're not all um, narcissists or psychopaths. Also with Martin Landau, you know, um, his daughter would probably re, um, dispute um, what I saw in Martin Landau. Let's just say he was, I forget who the hell he's married to. He was married to somebody famous and there was, you know, rumors around that he wasn't the best um, husband and according to his daughter, I think she has some resentment towards him. But when I knew him, it seemed like he had handled all of those um, earlier shenanigans and was in a phase of his life where he really did care about people. But look, I'm not his family. I don't know who he was behind the scenes. I would be surprised if he was um, had anything other than the typical problems with um, you know a family. When I knew him, he was a, a very... Um, caring man just because he loved talent and he loved actors and he loved acting and he spent hour after hour every fucking friday for years on end listening to me talk about scientology he would just sit there and listen and every because i told you guys i talked to everybody and cornered everybody in my acting class this is all i would talk about because i wanted to get it out and heal myself and i didn't have the money to go to a psychotherapist. Plus I wanted to do auto psychotherapy as we talked about before, because I figured I actually can figure this out myself. I have an acting class to act out the trauma so I don't have to kill everybody. And Martin Landau not only was an ear to listen to this, he actually mirrored what real friendship looked like and not to sound too effeminate, but what love looked like, because I didn't, I was getting mind blown being around non-Scientologists when I got to Martin Landau's actor studio. So I was immediately confronted with people that scared the shit out of me because either the normies, you know, I don't want to use the other word, um, what we called outsiders, but getting into the actor studio and meeting Martin, um, one year after I got in there, I was going to wake up because the books were dropped off on my doorstep. So as this was happening, just by peeling away from the Scientology class that I was in, Bobby Lyons, which we've talked about before, I automatically started to meet and learn what friendship was, what having somebody give something to you where you don't have to always exchange back because that was impounded into my mind. People doing things out of the kindness of their heart. I mean, I had a million stories um, from getting into Martin's class on where I was actually learning because I was finally out of the cult what the fuck emotions felt like. You know, I've said a million times, it makes you into, generally speaking, a secondary sociopath. And my emotions were shut down for most of my life. One of the key tools that they use to do that, by the way, is called the tone scale, which we're gonna break down one day. But anyways, man, my experience of Martin and just the whole class and the outside world in general 
it was mind blowing because I was actually learning day by day, step by step, these weird new things that everybody else around me already knew about somebody actually being a friend and caring because everybody around me in the cult was doing things for an agenda. That's why I'm so sensitive to anybody that comes at me with an agenda of any kind. I can sniff it out like a, like a wolf, you know, and I hate it. Um, but it was just amazing, um, to be around that class and, and just, I felt, I told you guys, I felt like a six year old, you know, like I was totally age regressed and reverted. As soon as I woke up, I didn't know my favorite color. I didn't know what happened to me. I didn't know what my likes and dislikes were. I didn't know what the fuck emotions were. And here I am being an actor. So I went through this huge transformation and Martin, and I don't know the story with his family was a massive, massive figure. I fucking miss that guy too, by the way. He died in 2017 as a side note. And my best friend who was 28 years old, which he talked about on the series named Nick Lashaway, who was going to be a huge actor, died in a car accident at 28. And I think part of that was the massive stress of getting out of the cult. That's a story for another time. So back to back um, where I had never lost anybody that I was close to ever before in my life. In 2016, I lost my best friend followed by Martin Landau, who I call a substitute father figure. He was like my real father. As corny as that sounds, that's just a great question, man. Thanks for reminding me of him. <laughs> um, so I, I feel like I just rambled. I like to kind of take your question and jump off of it just to pinpoint it and actually answer the thing and not go on a diatribe about fucking Martin, man. Um, there are actors that I met like him not a ton though. Um, and since we're talking about the actor studio, most of the people in the actor studio of all the classes that I've been in, even the Scientology classes, they had the most fame seeking whores that would do anything. And some of the most, there was the most narcissist in the actor studio class. Um, and Martin wasn't one of those. And a few people I met weren't like that but not many. <laughs> okay. Let's see if you got any other questions here. Oh my God. OB stop, man. Thanks for making me laugh earlier. Somebody actually texted me and said that who is Doug Kramer, who is Doug Scott Kramer, et cetera, is actually not taken. So if you want to make those hate, hate websites on me before Scientology gets to it, just let me know. Is it okay to link to your hate site in the chat? Did you already make it, man? We just discussed this an hour ago on a video. Uh, too funny, bro. Um, I don't expect you to make that, by the way. I know it costs money. I appreciate the joke. But um, if you do want to make it, have at it. Because sooner or later, um, I hope to get on their list. That's another thing Scientology doesn't realize and why they're so tone deaf to the outside world. It would be an honor to have a, a hate website. It's not something that would like intimidate me. I would love to see what they could come up with because I did work pretty hard before speaking out. Well, first of all, I never knew I was going to speak out, but I did work pretty hard to make sure I had all my ducks in a row and that they didn't have anything on me. I didn't have too many skeletons in my closet anyways, but I did make sure I was in a safe space to kind of go for it when I started out. Because when I started out three and a half years ago, we don't have the scene and the number of channels and outspoken people that we have today. So I didn't know what to expect. And like I told you guys before, I even called up Paul Haggis, right? When I started speaking out on YouTube for some um, solid advice. Um, Jane, what's going on? Did you see that apostate Alex was able to get approval to close? Yes, I did. Click close the road in front of St. Hill during the Scientology protest. What do you think Scientology will do to him now? Just the stuff that he's already talked about, about how they, you know, that he's definitely on their radar. They tried to smear him by saying he was in Scientology for a th few weeks and, and whatever. And then he claims that his website was hacked into a bunch of times. He's not saying it's Scientology, he's alleging, or just, you know, putting it out there. He's noticed it's increased. Um, I did see all this information and, and I am following the protest. What they're going to do, what do you think they're going to do to him? If they're trying to hack his website, they'd probably increase that. Because he's on their radar, he'll probably get a hate site before me. That motherfucker. Good for him. 
Um, and I'm sure he'll continue to, to go at him, man. So I think that, um, I don't think he has too many skeletons in his closet. I have talked to him about this kind of subject before. I think he'll be fine and he knows what he's doing basically. Um, but also we did a video on the protest. He does think minor critique. He does think that, uh, you know, Scientology history begins and ends with like Leah Remini and Mike Rinder. There's a whole history before that and the climate has changed. So I wanted to point out that he didn't let people know that they have facial recognition cameras, you know, so everybody's going to be identified. Unlike anonymous, they're not going to be wearing masks and that could put them in a position where they just want to show up and hang out with Alex for a protest one day. And then they find their lives or they're or somewhat inconvenienced by being followed with private investigators. They'll probably be put on a list. And we went over some other things where he tried to link us to Anonymous, which is a video he took down because he doesn't know the history, man. But he is an ambitious little beaver. So um, I guess let him go at it, man. <laughs> I think he's definitely going to be on their radar. But what can they do? You know, and he's prepared. Any other questions? Okay. Tammy, how you doing? Um, have you heard Poe on the Go has been fair game? Total horseshit, in my opinion, by the way. I was just talking with that, um, talking about that with another friend, and this is a good thing to jump off of. I was just talking on the phone the other night with a friend, including being hacked into his email. Okay, here we go. This is my opinion. Um Poe hasn't been in Scientology. He is an ex-retired, what, police chief or something? Um, so, you know, there's a climate in the community. And you guys know I'm a conspiracy theorist. I don't like that word. I just call it seeing through big lies. So even I don't jump to the conclusion that everything's OSA. I told you guys in the previous video we did an hour and a half ago that um, I can't prove that I've been fair game and I listed several of the things that happened, but I don't immediately think it's OSA. And um, within this community, not least Jeffrey Augustine saying that Vanessa of degraded daughters is being followed by private investigators and it must be OSA. Um, you know, these things just make me laugh. No offense to Poe, but you know, uh, he doesn't have a big enough following to get fair game. He's not talking about anything too controversial. And I don't think that's happening at all. I mean, even the big speaker routers like Rinder and Leah, now they do get fair game, but even Mike can live a somewhat relaxing life. They're not fair gaming him all the time and necessarily hacking into his computers and shit. There's bad actors in this community which we covered which spread allegations that fair game is going on to freak everybody out but a lot less you know osa's probably if anything just watching us do shit like you know poe does and make allegations where jeffrey's claiming that danny masterson was declared when that's total bullshit and spreading it all over the news there's paranoia that can easily be stirred up in this community where not everything's OSA and they're probably watching all of us do their work for us and saying, fuck man, they got it covered and just cackling at us. So no, I don't actually believe that. And, um, you kind of have to live the experience of Scientology too, to kind of know if you're being fair gamed or not. That's a hell of an accusation to make, uh, when he wouldn't even be on their radar in my opinion. Okay. Glenda, how are you? Question. Hey, Doug, you were by far the cutest. Oh, thanks, man. Cutest werewolf I've ever seen. You're going to make me blush. Will there be another game on Halloween? Yes. <laughs> Kelly Copter, and I'll link her video um, and her, I'll link a video to part three coming up on Halloween. And I'll link um, to her channel if you haven't subscribed. She's a really, you know what we were just talking about with these other people? She's the opposite of that. You know, we become pretty good friends. I love her. You can trust her. She's a good, good person in this community and she's doing part three and I'll link you to her channel. Please subscribe if you haven't, because she's got some amazing videos up there and she's a hell of an editor. <clears throat> Anyways, enough kissing Kelly's ass, but yeah, she's doing werewolf part three. I had an absolute blast doing the first two parts. Um, I don't think I'm going to be in part three. I told her, you know, keep moving and it's her thing and I don't want to impose. So she's got Aaron Smith Levin coming on. He's going to be awesome. 
And then she has three other people listed that are going to be there. And then the other four players or whatever are to be decided. So um, if you, she's getting better at explaining it because it's a little complex. But those of you that haven't been able to follow the first two, um, you can at least see that we're having a hell of a good time. And I bet you it'll be totally honed for part three. And I'll lead you guys over to that in the description box because um, it's just a good, it's a good way to hang out with um, other creators and, and never ends and stuff in this community and do something where we don't have to talk about trauma and Scientology all the time because it can be draining. And uh, it's just so awesome that Kelly has balanced it out with this really fun thing. And I asked her if she might do it every month or whatever. It's on her, but she's got a good thing going and we're all just having a fucking blast with it. Thanks for that question. One love, how are you? What's your favorite passion at the moment? Love that you're here. I'd probably say doing this, man. I mean, this has occupied um, more of my attention just in the last few months because um, I don't know. I just find it fun to hang out with you guys basically and do shit like this. I like reporting on the news in Scientology. And um, the last few months, this in general, like anybody else, you know, hanging out, seeing movies, um, smoking out of the balcony. Um, I'm not much of a party guy. I don't, um, you know, go to bars or anything like that. I am um, also quite a loner, so I don't mind. I love people and hanging out, but I spend a lot of time by myself. I read and I just love to live in my imagination. Company isn't always necessary. And like I said, for the last many months, especially, you guys feel like my friends, even though obviously we don't know each other. There's a bit of a parasocial relationship. But when you see the same na same names over and over, like One Love and stuff, I do feel like I know get to know your personality. And so this is like hanging out with friends as well. No more Z News, eh? It's about time, though. We need to um, hit our favorite poison, no? Do we have any Z News here? Philosophy, man, it's always good to see you. Very astute um, commenter. I always appreciate what you have to say. So what do you have to say, philosophy? Can you fire a question? Martin Landau was a badass actor, man. He was a really incredible actor. I just saw him the other night in a um, poker movie. I mentioned that as Scientologists, we used to, like a lot of the country, be addicted to um, Texas Hold'em. And um, he was in a game about that with Matt Damon and Edward Norton. Do you guys remember that? What was it, Rounders? Even in that movie where he had a small role, I just saw it like, two nights ago he's fucking incredible i agree everything he does he was an inspiration too for why i wanted to kind of be a character actor um part of that because i don't want to be famous and known i just wanted to do enough where you can be that guy that nobody knows their name so you don't get bugged in life and you can still live a normal life but they kind of recognize you i was already leaning towards that anyways and as you guys know martin landau is an incredible character actor you know he doesn't just like play himself like Tom Cruise where he tries to rely on his personality and shit. He actually would teach us and he was, that's why he loved talent and acting and everything. Cause he himself was a, a, a master craftsman where he would, you know, take on um, all sorts of different ways of being different people and making minor changes or whatever. Plus James Dean was his best friend. And like I said, he was married to somebody famous that I can't remember who was also in the class, but he would um, relish us with stories about all these amazing icons constantly. It was just amazing listening to the fucking guy. Okay, stand by. Oh, let me put on some music, guys, so I don't get caught up in the dead air shit where I start to freak out if it takes me too long to go through the chat. And by the way, I can only put on the presets that we mentioned before, which is chill, down tempo, lounge, hip hop, lo fi, chill hop, ambient, and future pop. I can't add bitching like death metal or some fucking Bob Marley in the background. We have to go with these presets, but let me put something on. So um, that one's not working so that we don't get hit with um, me panicking over dead air. All right, this is down tempo. The audio might be bad for like one second, but it should clean up. Hmm. Can you guys hear that? Also, if you don't mind, um, put a one in the chat after you listen to me speak over this music. If it's not bothering you, a two in the chat if it is. I just wanted to take a quick survey because I don't want to um, play this if it bothers people. But it's kind of party night, so it should fit the theme, hopefully. Philosophy, thanks for the question. 
Did you think acting helped to understand emotions, given that the cult shut down your feelings? Yeah, 100%. I mentioned before that um, that was my cathedral. That was my healing temple. Because a year after I got into Martin Landau's class, um, I woke up out of the cult and immediately my emotions came back um, so full force that it took about a decade to process them. That's why I was so angry. That's why I said I wanted to blow up Scientology's building. I went through every emotion you can imagine, but I didn't have many emotions before I woke up. So while it both was killing me, I knew it felt amazing to actually feel and grow massively. It also caused endless nightmares. I was dissociated for a decade. So it's like looking from the outside in at everything. I was in a different reality to my mates. And all of a sudden, this trauma that was buried under Scientology's hypnotism came to light in a single day. You add to the fact that I have to now save my parents. Am I going to be fair game if I speak out about Scientology? What about I can't focus on acting anymore? I finally got a break. You know, I was going to have a career as we talked about before. There were so many things that hit me and the emotions was the most powerful part that that's why I wanted to either kill myself or blow up the building, take out my parents and then kill myself because the emotions were absolutely overwhelming. Um, but it was also my greatest gift because that's what Scientology has to shut off. So, um, cause if they can shut your heart and your emotions down, which they're professionals at, you're going to lose your compass and your, and your morale and your guiding force and your intuition and your critical thinking and everything else. And then at that point you're under Elrond's spell. So getting out of that was a great gift, even though it almost fucking killed me. That's a great question. So what is your favorite color? Blue. It's an easy one. Maybe black would be second since I like to wear that quite a bit. Ciao. We got to do a part two, man, on the, um, on the free wins video. Cause that, that one was awesome. Me and Chow did a video talking about the free wind ship. That's their uh, prison ship. That's impossible to get off of and where they deliver or apparently used to deliver. Now, apparently they're doing it at the flag land base. Cause according to Aaron, it's not sailing anymore. We don't, I don't know if that's totally true yet, but that's the ship where you do the highest level of Scientology. And, um, me and Chow were, she did an amazing interview where for three hours, we actually talk about every facet of the free winds and the state that they're in today. Not really pertinent to what's my favorite color. Sorry for the ramble, but we have been getting um, a little bit wasted, but I don't see any Xenus. What's wrong with you guys? I guess everybody's already wasted in the audience. Xenu, by the way, if you're just joining us, means we take a hit of our favorite poison, mine being marijuana and whatever yours is. Um, this is a chance to hang out and... Uh, let it rip. <laughs> Glenda, how are you, Doug? I watched an episode of SOA. Is that Sons of Anarchy the other night? There was a guy in the background that looked a lot like you. Were you ever on that show? I've been asked that multiple times. No, I was not on that show. And by the time Sons of Anarchy came out, I had graduated from background work to finally getting real jobs. So I wouldn't, I wasn't doing any background anymore. But it's funny that you mentioned Sons of Anarchy. Let me turn off the music here for a second to talk about this. Because this brings us to Scientologist Johnny Lewis. Do you? Because I'm, I'm going to do a video on this at some point, but it's a really, really disturbing story. Johnny Lewis was on Sons of Anarchy. He was the blonde young man. I, don't rem I didn't watch the show, so I don't know what character he played. But not too long after, he was either on that show or doing something else, he had a psychotic break. He was a second generation Scientologist born in. He was a normal guy and he had a successful acting career that he built up over the years. And then he got into a motorcycle accident. Plus you add Scientology indoctrination into this. Who knows what it is? He started to have massive anger issues. He was, his parents were having problems with them and they had to get him either, you know, they had to get him some help. And one day he lost his shit. He, um, kind of had superhuman powers, uh, trigger warning. Cause this is kind of graphic. If you don't want to hear this, but he killed, um, the landlady to some house, some grandma, he killed the cat. And then apparently he threw himself off the balcony 
And this was here in the Silver Lake area, I believe, in Los Angeles. And it's just another story, even if it was or was not head trauma related, who knows? But there's many stories like this because Scientology makes you have psychosis. It's the induced psychosis that you get from L. Ron Hubbard's psychosis. It's literally a mind transfer, right? So there's so many stories like Johnny Lewis where, well, take my friend Nick Lashaway, for example. He died at 28. Now, it was a car accident, but I talked to him on the phone. He was losing his mind. He tried to burn down his apartment complex. I mean, I could tell you stories about him where we were both peeling away from Scientology at the same time. He's my best mate where we got into the actor studio together. So we were leaving at the same time, but he kind of wanted me to stop talking about it at a certain point because he could only go so far. It's really weird because he initially was the rebel when we were Scientologists and he planted seeds of doubt that helped me out and made me want to rebel more against Scientology before I snapped out of it. And then when it came to help him out, he was only willing to go so far because he didn't want me to talk about it too much because of his mom and she was still an indie Scientologist. And that's, he just drew the line. And then he started to go crazy. And like I said, he burnt down um, his apartment. He got his toe run over on a train track and lost a little bit of his foot. I mean, this guy was a sane person. He was a brilliant actor. He was, a, he was just a really cool, unique guy. He reminds me a lot of my favorite actor, River Phoenix. And because he was getting out of Scientology, he went fucking crazy. So it just reminds me of this Johnny Lewis story, Nick Lashaway, and, and probably a hundred other people that um, go crazy because that's what it's designed to do. I mean, I told you guys I had a nervous breakdown, literally, um, outside of the advanced organization in Los Angeles where I was hearing voices in my head because of the induced psychosis, the massive belief in beings talking to me and being on me that I have to get rid of day after day after day. What the fuck do you think that does to people? I mean, I know we use the word Xenu, which is on that OT3 level to, you know, which nobody's saying, to take a hit of our favorite poison and we joke about it. I joke about it. But it's fucking serious, man. By the time you get up to that level, you actually believe in that. And um, the level of psychosis I experience, it's hard to even put into words. This is why I say, man, I get healing every time I do these videos and it makes me appreciate. I have many thoughts in every single day, even though I've been out for 15 years, about how lucky I am that I never have to pick up the cans again. I never have to do an OT3 session again. I, I'm 10 minutes away from Scientology's churches. I never have to go there again. It's just hard to explain that no matter what else happens in my life, because I never have to you know, go to a Scientology organization again, and because I got that sick psychopath voice out of my head and I can hear my own authentic voice, I'll always be grateful for that. It's like, it's incredible not to be a Scientologist. So be thankful, those of you that are just watching and didn't grow up in this horseshit bed. <laughs> Have you heard from the kid who jumped out of the window and LRH's birthday? Yes, that's Liz Gale's fucking brother, ma'am. So sad, such a waste of life. Yeah, Peyton. Um, let me take a drink of water. I really want to talk to Liz Gale too. And I wanted to ask her about this too. If you don't know who Liz Gale is, she began speaking out not that long ago. And she has a book out too about um, confessions of a ex-Scientologist stoner or something. I mean, I really want to get her on so we can get high together and talk about Scientology. But yeah, man, it's so sad. Not only did she lose her brother, she lost her family, her house, everything. And she was featured on Leah Remini's show, Scientology in the Aftermath, on one of the episodes. She's an amazing, like, really outgoing gal. She survived a lot. But I can't imagine what it's like. I mean, her brother was a, a kind of a genius. I think he was at MIT. I might have that wrong. But he was at one of those prestigious schools. He worked for Earthlink, which was a Scientology-owned company. He was like a genius. At 15, he was already, like, going to this prestigious college. And what he did is he wrote um, on LRH's birthday, he wrote some formula on like the 10th story or the 15th story of MIT or said university. And then he wrote a formula for the distance that you'd have to fall. And then, you know, basically him jumping out of the window. 
And then he threw himself out the window and killed himself. And he was young. He, he was either in his early 20s or like 19 or 20. Again, just like Johnny Lewis and Nick Lashaway, who we talked about, this is another example. He was trying to peel away from the family. He had nobody to talk to. I mean, I almost feel like I can get inside of, of his head and what he felt like. I just didn't have the balls to do it. I wanted to suicide my ass too. And the one I was thinking of is jumping off a building. Because with the gun, you might fuck it up. I didn't want to, I didn't want, I wanted it to be fast. But I mean, I walked around night after night after night at three and four in the morning, think that delusional thinking about this all the time because I couldn't sleep because of the flashbacks and shit. So I was going to do it with a, a building uh, like him. But thank God when it comes down time to really do it, you really have to be pot committed because I didn't have, I wanted to live. I, I realize now but I couldn't stop thinking about suicide for a couple of years. And it's just so sad that this um, thing continues on to this day, not least because they have their tax exempt status. And this is going to happen to bright people over and over and over again. I mean, we just discussed three people. Liz Gale's brother was a genius. He had a whole life ahead of him. Nick Lashaway was a really unique actor and he was just an incredible person. And then Johnny Lewis, you know, I met him briefly. He was a fucking cool guy. And look at what Scientology does to people. Sorry to get so intense, but this brings back a lot of memories. <sighs> Marilyn, it's good to see you. If you guys didn't check out the interview that we did with Marilyn, I mean, what I just described, my story, is absolutely nothing compared to hers. And we don't compare trauma in this community. I can already hear Marilyn telling me that. But seriously, her story, what she survived is incredible. And we just did part one a couple of days ago, and she'll be coming back soon where we haven't even gotten to the part where she gets into a cult for 16 years. And we're going to talk about that too. But she is an amazing being of light that you never know she went through this and is a true survivor. It's good to see you, Marilyn. I can't wait to talk to you again. All right. What else we got here, my friends? Let me put on the music again so I don't panic over the dead air. Why don't we try hip hop? Sorry if my voice is a little strained. I've used it quite a bit lately. We probably won't be here forever, man. It's been a fucking long ass week. I'm beat. But it's cool hanging out with you guys. There you are, young lady. My mind went A while I saw you. God damn it. Hang on. Willie Weed, I'm not following the conversation. Are you hitting on chicks in the audience? She can love bomb me. Ah, I see we have a little romance going on in the audience. Have at it, guys. I mean, don't bother to ask any questions or comments. Talk among yourself. Who am I? No, no seriously. It doesn't even... It, I love the fact that you guys chatter amongst each other. It just makes me panic when I can't find the questions. I There you are. Thank you for being here. Proof that you are alive, that you weren't bullshitting me at the beginning, that you were going to be here and just say hi and then it's really good to see you my mama a wall a long time follow the channel i haven't seen you forever so it really is fucking cool to see you again thanks for being here finally guys jesus <sighs> Zenu, thank you martha because i've been um that's the perfect time after unloading all that shit whenever the word Zenu comes up we take a hit of our favorite poison let's commence Oh, <coughs> also, if the music bothers you, please hit it too. I, I still um, don't know what you guys think. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <coughs> okay, we already pulled that up again. Good to see you. Always worth throwing up again, though, because damn it, I have missed you. Lorna, are you a loner too? I've seen you in the comments and you seem to make comments that set yourself apart from the rest of the pack. Yeah. I mean, what can you do? I've always been that way. I've tried to join groups. That's why I said it freaked me out that I would ever join a cult because like I said before, I don't even like groups. So um, I've always been that way. There's nothing I can do about it. Um, that's I'm sure you know what I mean, Lorna, and other loners slash introverts or whatever. I've just always been in my head and my imagination. And that keeps me pretty entertained. 
and um, I don't know, kind of not jamming with the rest of the people around me. That's part of why I think I really took the Scientology. There's not only concepts in there that I still agree with, such as there's more to life than just the five senses. So that alone, that that kind of Gnostic um, spin on it, just basically that there was a bigger ver- vision of reality and stuff. I already fucking agree with that, just popping out of the womb. So um, I was probably destined to fall into a cult at some point if I wasn't born into it, just because, you know, what are your options? <laughs> Um, I don't know if that makes any sense, but what I'm saying is I already had my head in the clouds. Scientology has these ideas that I think probably are true. Like I said, there's some, there's more to the five senses. I don't know if we can walk through walls and shit. I don't give a fuck. I'm not trying to have any OT powers. It was just the metaphysics of Scientology was not offered in the everyday classes that you take at school and shit. I was already a dreamer. So those kind of concepts, um, do appeal to me. It's just unfortunate that those ideas can be used to um, do the opposite of expanding your mind, but they actually close it down. It's actually a a clever way to trap people. I'm sure there's bits of truth in every religion slash cult or whatever, um, which people might think is ridiculous. Like, why do they follow that or whatever? Because undoubtedly you're initially let in um, or the philosophy is surrounded with perhaps a lot of truths, but that that is the hook to get you into all the mind control the hypnosis etc that's another thing scientology should be i think could actually be taken down for because i mean they got manson on it he was um and we've covered that in a previous video he didn't actually do any of the killings right but he went to prison uh for life and uh died in prison and that was a sort of unprecedented case of he was convicted and given a sentence along with the women um, be, because he hypnotized them, right? The women could not resist. Um, that, we already broke that down because it doesn't actually make any sense. So Manson got convicted, uh, long story short, for imposing his will on the girls, which had no choice but to go kill. So if that's true, Manson should have been um, convicted. And the girls, since they didn't were not under their free will, they should have been let go, right? So both people got nailed. But what I'm saying is, and this isn't talked about enough, in my opinion, Scientology is literally covert hypnotism under the guise of all the bullshit that they say it is. Superpowers, going exterior, learning how to improve your business, just take this communication course. Scientology has the quickest way to put somebody to trance with that communication course and other things. It's the fastest way to go under. And this is why Hubbard didn't open up hypnosis clinics because he would be required to be licensed to do so. So the fact that you're literally hypnotizing someone, which doesn't make them dumb, it um, makes them super suggestible to all the bullshit courses. It removes their free will and critical thinking and they don't have informed consent. So if that's what Manson can get in an unprecedented case, surely Scientology is practicing hypnosis without a license. They're putting people under and robbing them of their money, their family, their time, and everything else. Uh, And then they're gonna try to fair game them when they get out and snap out of the hypnosis spell. So that alone is illegal. You're not actually allowed to do that. I mean, forget where's the body buried and all this shit. Like, that's why Scientology works. That's why it's so powerful and intelligent people fall for it. If you're fucking on a stage show and you get hypnotized and it's suggested that you're a monkey, you're going to act like a monkey, right? Um, At least they have informed consent. But we're not dumb. We're just um, being conned in a way that's illegal. And it's quite clever. And Hubbard was a master hypnotist too, by the way. Um, sorry to ramble on that. I don't even know if I answered the question. I'm super high because that last hit really went to the brain. Purple, how are you? Question. So Doug, when was the last time you made love with two women? I've never made love with two women. Just wondering why is that an offer? So you must be a female. Um, no, I've actually never had a threesome. Not that I would be opposed to that. It's just the opportunity didn't come up. Well, Maybe there was opportunities, but here's the thing, Purple. When I Let me remove this music because it's actually driving me nuts. I'm going to put a two in the chat. Um, I This is why I'm so freaked out, especially since the Danny Masters and shit and finding out all the pedophiles and criminals that were like all around me. I was trying to keep my fucking ethics in as a Scientologist. I wouldn't have a threesome because that's out ethics. 
when I would masturbate once in a while, I felt horrible. Um, and I spent thousands and thousands of dollars on auditing, just trying to go whole track into past lives to figure out where I first masturbated. So I'd stop doing it in present time. I, um, when I slightly fucked up, I applied the ethics conditions. I wasn't fucking raping women like Danny, dude. I wasn't like uh, not going up the bridge. I dedicated my entire life um, to going up the bridge. And, to, and in order to go up the bridge, you're said that you have to be clean and truthful and honest. So I fucking believe that. So there was no threesomes. The amount of sexual repression I had was outrageous. That was another thing to get over and that I had to have modeled to me because I was very sexually repressed. I mean, I had girlfriends and shit and I fucked or whatever. But again, because my emotions opened up when I came out of Scientology, I learned about love. I learned about friendships. I didn't have any of that, man. So I wasn't totally dead with my partners. I wasn't um, abusive at all. I've never laid a hand on a, on a woman ever, but I tried to keep my fucking ethics in. So this kind of threesome shit or anything even slightly funky, um, I wasn't, I wasn't going to do it. So I did a lot of making up for it when I got out. I did, a, I, that's, you know, I smoked an exorbitant amount of weed. I tried to get, you know, laid a lot. I went overboard on everything purposely, not only because my emotions were telling me I've been repressed for so long, I need to fucking, you know, have some fun or like be, become part of, become a human. I, I consciously overdid it knowing that I would pull back but I needed massive experience in the shortest amount of time because my plan was whatever the hell happened to me in Scientology, it'll take two years to fix because I can't focus on auditions. I can't focus on acting. It's all I talk about with my friends. I, in a very Scientological way, made it my mission to work out a plan of how to get this asshole's you know, shit out of my head, deprogram and get right back to Hollywood. Needless to say, things didn't work out that way but that was the plan. So yeah, I was sexually repressed, emotionally repressed, and I was literally a um, secondary sociopath. That's so weird to say. I guess the numbers don't matter anymore, guys, as I see them here, because we're not playing the music. It's hard to take surveys anyway, so I'm, I, I'm not even paying attention. Um, stand by, please. Good question. Cassandra asks, have you ever been in a Scientology video or did you ever want to be? Yes, I've been in many and thank God they're scrubbed from the internet. <clears throat> I don't know how many of you guys know this or pay attention, but up until I'd say 2016 or 2017, everything was up on YouTube. Um, a lot of channels, particularly conspiracy related videos have been totally memory hold year by year by year. So back in the day when you could type in Scientology, and find anything you wanted. You can't find shit anymore, man. And thank God, because part of that was a couple years before I started the channel, I saw all my videos. And Tony Ortega had them embedded too in certain blog posts. So I was, I remember one day we went up to Big Bear, which is about two and a half hours outside of Los Angeles, three hours or whatever. And they would just film me like in rain, just walking around, looking spiritual. It's all about like looking, you know, a certain way. If you've noticed in Scientology videos, I mean, their production, I mean, the storyline, everything is just complete crap. So I remember one time we went up to the mountains, like fucking five hours away when we're in Los Angeles and we could have got the same shot, like, you know, 20 minutes away. They went to extreme lengths. We were on this fucking mountain, you know, again, I'm looking into the sun and all this shit. Now look over here, Doug. Now I, there's no fucking dialogue even. Now I, I walked across the street and, um, we did like 50 fucking takes, man. I mean, it's total shit. You, they think they're so Hollywood that you have to do a million takes all just to get me like looking up at the sun. I've seen all those fucking things. I, I do wish I, ha I, wish I had them because they're hilarious. I'd love to show them to you guys, but they're not on the internet. If anybody wants to look for them or wants to take a crack at it, I promise you, I've fucking looked everywhere. They were... Um, Films that were based on the lectures that were coming out. I don't remember what lecture series, but I was in a lot of films where they were promoting their ridiculous lecture series when David kind of pimped out that package. 
So that's, that's the series of videos that I was in. I did um, almost get out to Gold Base to do one of their technical films. That didn't happen because I didn't pack past their security check somehow. I was probably in trouble at the moment. But um, I've done many videos. I would love to see them if anybody happens to be able to find them. Okay. Any other questions before we... Well, we got plenty of time. Um, stand by, please. See, now I need the fucking music on. Again, Chow, or am I just... All right, you guys in the audience, as I flip on the music, go ahead and hit it. I'm going to take a break for 10 minutes and then I'll join you, but I am absolutely stoned out of my mind right now. How are you guys doing in the audience? Okay, thanks for the comment, Philosophy. No question, but just wanted to say that it's horrifying to hear what this tech does. Yeah. And I just wanted to say how absolutely amazing it is that you speak with such clarity. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Philosophy, you as well. And I want to thank you. I thank you, my friend, because seriously, I pay attention to the comments that you make. You always ask really insightful questions and make really astute observations. And we've, um, you know, messengered back and forth. I don't really think you're a cool person. We have some really, really good contributors in this community. And as if you notice, we don't have a moderator since Goldie kind of, you know, I guess whatever, that's another story, but she's not around, right? And we still don't have any trolls yet, which makes me feel kind of weird. <laughs> I mean, we got a lot of trolls when uh, the Danny Masterson conviction was kicking off. One of the my videos got taken down for reasons I still don't understand, and I got a warning. And then um, there were trolls, but it's just been amazing the last couple of weeks. Maybe it's the power of the theta in the group where we're keeping the trolls away. But they'll be here soon enough, man. So we will have to get a moderator at some point. Jonathan, have you ever studied the Meisner technique? I remember talking about this with Kelly Copter. I think we talked about this a little bit briefly. I did when I was younger. What do you think, Jonathan? Did it work for you or not? It basically teaches you how to react in the moment, like real, right? If I have this right, Jonathan, correct me in the comments afterwards if I'm wrong. But isn't the Meisner technique where... <clears throat> Stand by. Two people sit across from each other and they basically say the same word or something like hi. And then the other person goes hi. And then you say hi. And then you say hi. It's kind of like the TRs, right? The communication course. You and then you might pick another word. Um, I don't know, greetings. Greetings. In other words, they keep repeating it back, and then natural reactions happen, and that's that can kind of teach you how to um be in the moment. Is that the miser technique? Someone told me recently that Tom Cruise did too. Interesting. I have no idea. Well, actually, we did a video of Tom called Tom Cruise and John Travolta preach Scientology at the Actor Studio. That's the place I went to that we were talking about earlier with Martin Landau and these two jackasses um, throwing a bunch of Scientology to the aspiring actors in the audience. And uh, again, I'll link that video too, which goes into detail about that. But Tom Cruise does talk about how he gets in the moment. I thought he had a couple of insightful things to say. But again, I broke down the Scientology's kind of snag in his method. But um, it wouldn't surprise me if at some point he maybe practiced it. I don't, it didn't seem to me like that would be his current technique. But his current technique, as with his, um, his technique in general, is to flash that charismatic, psychopathic smile be Tom Cruise himself, um, try to be a stuntman and, and, and make up for, I don't know, who knows what deficiency. And the acting skills um, are really nothing other than just be Tom Cruise. That's why I like people like Martin Landau, Gary Oldman, and a host of other people that had real talent and didn't simply rely on whatever the hell he's relying on. That guy should get into a fucking acting class, man, because... I don't ever think he was an actor to begin with. Mind you, he commits. I think he's, it's just my opinion. I think he's a psychopathic personality. So that gives him the drive and the um, no fear to jump off cliffs. I mean, he's amazing at what he can do. He has a stamina like a motherfucker. Um, but I think that just comes from his psychopathic traits. When I look at him, I don't see real emotions, even though he's good at faking it. And so... Um, if he ever gets out of the cult, um, 
I don't think those emotions would ever come back. He's just a very good um, bullshitter. <laughs> Do you guys think he's an actor? I mean, that's just my opinion, but I'm sure there's a lot of people that actually think he's really good. But um, I, I, when I, I watch movies with him all the time because he makes good movies. I just saw The Firm last week. But when I look at him, I see um, Nobody Home and kind of like a Jason Bateman character. Not Jason Bateman. Patrick Bateman from American Psycho. And by the way, Christian Bale, who played that role, said that he based Christian Bale on Tom Cruise. I guess we'll do a few more questions before we roll out, man. Um, Marin, that's like sunshine or energy. Yes, it's really infectious. And uh, you know how you can just tell, like, looking at somebody like Tom Cruise or a lot of these politicians and shit and you can just look in their eyes and just listen to the way they speak and there's like nobody home when you meet someone like Marilyn for example you don't even have to um spend five seconds like finding out who this person is there's just an energy and a lightness I mean people have it right I just fucking love Marilyn man I mean and she oh god Marilyn has been through fucking hell and back. And the fact that she can be so bubbling and bright. I think I even asked her that even in the interview or when we were talking on the phone. Where you you must have always been this way. You must have popped out of the womb as a sunshine being. Because I don't or did the experience make you such? I think it was the latter. Mandy, how are you, man? Not a question, just a comment. Thanks. Okay, I think we already read this. I'm falling behind. Sorry, guys. Again, we're going to get an administrator in here and work out the kinks for next Sunday. I promise you it will be so easy to do. But tonight I'm having to wing it. Hopefully one last time. I'm so behind on these. Philosophy with another intriguing question. I have had this pipe for about a year and it's completely clogged. So it's uh, a pain in the ass to use. The aforementioned Marilyn said a while back, you're awesome, Doug. So are you. You made it more than bearable to tell. Thanks, Marilyn. And yes, everyone has a story that's important to share. That said, fuck Marlene. Right. I was thinking about adding that tonight, Marilyn. Not only is Marilyn a ball of sunshine, but she's quite the partier because on the stream, we played the party game, which was only reserved for Sunday, young lady. And um, she smoked with me and we partaked in, well, I think you did water, Mar I don't know what you did. I think we get a little tipsy, but if I had that wrong, maybe there was just water. But we had a little bit of a party game. And that party game was not only reserved for the word Xenu, but Marlene, who is the evil cult leader that Marilyn has the confidence to now say out loud and wants to spread. And again, when we, part, when we do part two, we're going to finally meet Marlene because we didn't even get into that part. This is Marilyn, cult leader for 16 years. She's brave enough to speak her name. And so we'll be adding, please add Xenu slash Marlene if you want to take a hit of your favorite poison tonight. <laughs> Can you guys hear that music? Is it annoying? I don't know. I'm going to let that go, okay? I've just missed you as well, friend. Fucking awesome, man. Really, really good to see you. Martha talking about getting naked. There are 8 million stories in the naked city. This has been one of them. Obviously chatting amongst each other. Have at it because I have no idea what you're talking about. Um, there are 8 million stories in the naked city. What would that be? You guys talking about New York? What are you guys talking about? That's way more than 8 million. Um... Just scroll through here and see if you guys have any more question marks. Damn it. I'm so frustrated that I don't have an admin because this is just so lame. Okay. Thanks for hanging out, man. We have 170 people here and I feel undeserving because this is like um, too slow. S Steffi, good to see you. I love your cute animal, by the way. And I think you're new here. If you're new, by the way, um, and you don't know what we're doing, the community, as uh, as I mentioned before, is very welcoming and safe until we get some trolls in here. Um, eventually, I'm sure. 
So don't be afraid to jump in and say hi, talk with people, or throw up a question. I think you're a newbie, right? You should read David Icke. Oh, I have. I read all of his books when I first started waking up. He was the one that um, I guess kicked off. I read so many authors, my friend. Um, not just him, but a million other ones. But I do remember writing across him right at the beginning of my journey. And he opened me up to the fact where, you know, just like I believe my cult leader uh, Hubbard, you know, had all the answers. Um, I mentioned before, I really do see Scientology or any destructive cult as a microcosm of simply what's happening on the macrocosm. So he was a big factor in introducing me to um, that maybe world leaders don't have your best interest at heart. And maybe you should question the propaganda machine called the television and all these weird, not weird ideas. His ideas just happened to correlate with what was in Steve Hassan's book, where he was, that was the cult book that showed me how Scientology worked. And you can just apply it to other areas in society. And it was the fact that um, what Ike was talking about, um, he was talking a lot about mind control. He talked about Project MK Ultra, which is what Scientology is kind of an offshoot of. What he was talking about was so in line with what I was learning about what I was what was happening in Scientology, and particularly Steve Hassan's book, where he goes into mind control, phobia indoctrination, NLP, hypnosis, a lot of the stuff that he talked about. So I do remember him. He talks, yeah, exactly. He talks a lot about the beyond the five sentences. You would like him. Believe me, man, I spent, um, I probably read every one of his um, books uh, in addition to a thousand other ones when I was trying to, <coughs> just to tell you real quick, if you guys don't remember, I was um, made really stupid in Scientology because I only studied that. So it, I made it my mission to learn the basic knowledge that you guys know. In other words, what's what does psychology have to say? Um, what I just needed a basic education, right? So after I did that, then I started. This was simultaneously while figuring out the mind control shit. You know, like I said, Steve Hassan's book opened me up to all this other information about these subjects I never heard of before. That led to people like David Ike and waking up to see that Scientology wasn't the only one using mind control, and this is and that this has been going on for a while. So. Um, I totally am stoned and completely lost my train of thought where I was going with that. But um, I needed a basic um, education and then I start, was going down rabbit holes at the same time. It all was kind of um, coalescing and um, I went from super stupid with no knowledge in Scientology, learning what psychologists and um, subjects that you guys have studied in school, etc to get up to the basic knowledge. And then beyond that was learning um, material going down the rabbit hole. That's what I wanted to say. I hope that makes sense. Um, if you guys don't know who David Icke, by the way, is, he's also the guy that thinks the leaders are shape-shifting reptilians. I don't fucking know if that's true or not, man. I mean, I've never seen anybody shape-shift, but um, I, keep that in the, I keep all options open, man, because one of the things I'm not going to do is think that um, I know what I'm talking about. And so you always keep uh, learning new things. That's why I don't need a religion. I don't need to fucking kind of, not to sound corny, but label myself. Well, I'm an atheist. Well, I'm a, I just like knowledge and then I intuitively follow where it goes. If it makes sense, I add it to my brain. If it doesn't, I reject it. But at least I do my own thinking now. Not only not Scientology does my thinking for me, my parents don't do their, my thinking for me. But the governments and the television and all the other shit we're talking about no longer do my thinking for me either. It's a great fucking freeing feeling, by the way, if you've never tried it. <laughs> That's why I've said a million times Scientology was a great gift because short of growing up into a condensed version of the microcosm, the macrocosm, I probably would have stayed in Hollywood. I would have been uh, a mind controlled slave in Scientology and I would be none the wiser, but I'd be rich and famous and you'd all like me. <laughs> We'll talk about Hollywood another time. That's a whole nother story. Oh, I'm actually doing an interview tomorrow with a really lovely lady who happens to be um, a massive fan of River Phoenix too. And the gentleman that does the intro to her podcast um, was actually in River Phoenix's band. Talk about synchronicities lately. Um, it must be Scientology OT powers. OB again. Why are cults either prudish or free or free for alls with sex? 
Yeah, that's a good question. I don't know, but I would imagine they play um, the black and white on each side because you're right. They're either super prudish or they repress sexuality or like Keith Raniere and other cults. They just all want to and Manson. They just all fuck each other. It's all about a way to control by extremities and sex. I'm sure you know, OB is probably one of the greatest things to seize by a cult leader to control, to really move them around like an automaton. I mean, everybody knows that that's the, um, that's why there's so much like sex. This is going to sound like Scientology shit because this is the kind of shit Hubbard would preach, but on an extreme angle where sex is, you know, prevalent, overplayed in the media and everywhere else where people are basically desensitized to it. Um, I can't read that. Fuck. I got to get a bigger font because sorry, I can't, I can't read the name, but the comments crystal clear. Why do so many Scientologists do nude scenes in their movies? And why didn't you do some? How do you know I didn't? I actually did a, um, I shouldn't say this, but you guys can't find it anyways. This is going to be like my sex tape that comes out or something. That, no, it wasn't a big deal anyways. I think I only showed my ass. But no, when I was trying to break in, I did a reality show. I'm not going to say the name of it, and I dare you to find it. Um, where it was kind of some fucking R-rated stupid thing where it was all fake, you know, but it was when reality shows were all the rage, the pay was halfway decent and I had no credits on my resume and I was new to Hollywood, right? Um, and I was a Scientologist, so I was already brain dead and had no moral compass. So um, we were in this castle for like a few weeks and we staged arguments and everything. Um, there was a couple of hookers, not hookers, strippers that were in it. Uh, that would add to the drama and we just played characters doing this reality show and thank god it never went on to television but to answer your question if you're famous and you're a scientologist like jewel like so you can pretty much do whatever role you want there was a divide in my head where even though i kept my ethics in there's no threesomes no weird shit in my real life that's another reason why I liked acting, because even though I was a program Scientologist, they don't necessarily have any rules on you playing whatever roles you want to play. So I would get cast most often as surfers and serial killers. So um, I loved doing things that were outside of my Scientology programming. Obviously, looking back at it now, that was part of me subconsciously waking up because it is contradictory to Scientology. So there's no rules necessarily with Juliette Lewis. You know, you've seen the movie she's done. She's a Scientologist. You can do anything you want. Um, basically, if you're famous in Scientology, that's uh, all they care about is that and how much money and influence you have. And so you can play whatever role you want, including Elizabeth Moss, Irony of Ironies, um, in the movie Handmaid's Tale. There's a different set of rules for celebrities and for public members that I didn't even know about until I actually got out just how different it really was. I stand alone. Hi. Question. Hi, Doug. Have you read the totally bizarre and disturbing Joburg sec check? Yes. In fact, that was given to me on grade two, I believe. You have to actually do a sec check. Let me turn off the music because I'm fucking going nuts here. Yeah, I've not only um, read it, and I think it's uh, I flashed it up in one of the episodes on the series probably. But if I remember correctly, that was part of grade two where that's on their grade chart. You're told you're basically going to be free from overts and withholds. So they give you this sec check and it is ridiculous. Uh, standalone where they ask you all sorts of questions like you're basically a CIA agent. I mean, they're completely inappropriate and they weren't um, necessarily made to be part of grade two, but it's a very intrusive um sec check and like i said i have it on the series and since you bring it up i'll i'll try to link that in the description box so you can see some of the questions but you bring up a good point by bringing that up many of scientology's processes were to keep moles from coming into the cult to keep the cia out even though they might have been working with them who the fuck knows but hubbard got more and more paranoid about being infiltrated because they would be so the questions that he made um, and he was a conspiracy theorist and spy upon spy upon spy, some true, some from his own, you know, overs and withholds and paranoia, but nonetheless, he was very in school and in intelligence and, and all the, 
you know, just the crazy spy games that you only think are in movies. Like that's why Scientology is like that. I mean, Scientology itself is a global conspiracy. And, you know, the kind of games that oh, sudden all these people get up to, like you have to become a conspiracy theorist to get out of this fucking thing. I never, that's not my natural inclination, but Scientology's nuts, man. And, and the layers are deep and they play, you know, we were just talking earlier about how maybe they'll send moles into the community. And I showed you the Leah Remini, um, how Scientology fired back today and the lengths they go to. Like it's a totally paranoid conspiratorial intelligence agency intelligence gathering agency. Um, but anyways, um, my point about this is that the Joe Berg and other things were created out of Hubbard's paranoia. They weren't necessarily made to be part of the bridge to total freedom, but they're added in there. And so when I'm having questions read to me where I'm supposed to free myself from burdens and it's like, have you ever spied on Russia? Like, you know, have you ever had bad thoughts about L Ron Hubbard or, um, I don't remember what the fucking questions are, but they were obviously taken out of Hubbard's paranoia of um, being infiltrated. That's a great question. All right, Lorna, how are you doing? And by the way, do we have any um, Zenu slash Marlene question, you know, or statements that you want to throw up so we can all get thrashed together? Oh my God, Doug, you were more like in seminary school and training to be a Catholic priest. You were more pure than almost everybody. I was, man. I was trying to do the tech right because I fucking believed in it. And I was willing to quit smoking pot, quit fucking around. I didn't have too many 2D problems anyways. Um, I was already kind of self-disciplined. Um, but I was a rebel too. Um, but yeah, man, I because I believed in Hubbard and that the tech would work, and if I just do the conditions and I'll have an acting career, there's a formula to do life. I fucking believe that man. And I've explained how I got pushed into it very, very slowly because I hated it for 10 years and I knew it was a scam at the beginning. That's why, um, I feel it's kind of a unique story to tell because I went under and it was done through a, a process that, I mean, how was I going to escape Scientology? My parents were pushing it on me and they brought me to a point where it was almost the, the a way to, to, to kind of escape. Uh, we, I've already talked about that on the series, so I won't bore you, but, um, let's just keep, uh, Catholic school. Yeah. So what I'm saying is once I believed in it, da I was surprised that, you know, Danny Masterson wasn't following it. Um, you know, Scientologists weren't all trying to go up the bridge. They weren't all ethical. Like I thought they were quite the opposite, but God damn it. I was a Puritan. Have you ever heard the seven story mountain by Thomas Merton? I haven't, but I will, um, Am I going to remember that? Lauren, if you want to just toss that in the comments afterwards, I would like to Google that so I can know what you're talking about. But until then, I don't. But I assume it appertains to what um, what we're talking about, about being a pure ethics, you know, tech follower. Was I the only one in Scientology that actually believed in this shit and follow? Or I, a lot of people believed in it, but that actually followed the fucking shit? Because, you know, Grant Cardone's running a scam, you know, I wouldn't say my dad was involved in too many shenanigans, but it just, you know, well, it simultaneously leads you to kind of be a scammer and a sociopath too. At least while that was happening to me, I believed in the ethics part. So I didn't scam anybody. I didn't set up, you know, some Grant Cardone bullshit. Um, and there's a lot of businessmen that do that. I don't know. I was just, I thought I was following the fucking tech. All right. Enough rambling on that. Thank you for that point, by the way. Take a couple more of them or roll out of here. Been going for a bit. Plus, like I said, I'm just fucking beat, man. <laughs> um, how are you guys feeling? And what time is it where you're at? And where are you at? If you feel bad about not being trolled, I can fill in. OB, always there to have my back. Thank you for brightening my day, man, with your good fucking jokes. I appreciate it. We are trollless at the time. I do kind of miss them because it... If you're not being trolled, you're probably not over the target. So what am I doing wrong? And second of all, I just like playing little, you know, I like playing games back and forth because I learned about year one into YouTube, not to take anything personally, because initially I did and it almost crushes you. But after you get used to it, it's like, it's actually fun to have the trolls around and I miss them. So OB, can you fucking fill in? I'll look for a troll comment before I roll out of here. My TV, are many Scientologists still in because of fear, family and friends? 
I think most of them are indoctrinated. There's X amount of percentage that will stay in that are, you know, under the radar where they want to keep their family. That's a choice that they make where for whatever reason they snap out of it or semi snap out of it. They pull away from the church, but often they will pretend to be Scientologists so they don't get declared a suppressive person and lose their family. That's a lot of people. And just to jump onto that, I was never going to do that. It, we talked about it before, so I won't ramble. But as soon as that book was dropped off and I knew I was in a cult, I, um, despite feeling the rubber band of my programming pulling me back to the cult, pulling me back to my family, making me want to take a plea deal to, okay, I won't talk out about it and say certain things. No, dude, I was going to try to save my family. I was never going to compromise my reality again. I was going to find out how the trick worked. I was, was going to make sure this doesn't happen again. I was so offended that I was living in illusion my whole life and I was lied to. I took it personally and there was no way I was going to, I went from being a hardcore Kool-Aid drinking Scientologist, like I just described to you one day. And then the next day after I read that book, jumped on the internet, et cetera, I was not a Scientologist anymore. So there was no indie route. There was no compromising of well, if I go under the radar, I can hang on to my family. No, dude, it was the anger that we talked about earlier where I wanted to blow up their building. I threatened my parents' life, et cetera. It was the anger though that needed to come out and that actually fueled me to make sure that I didn't pitch my tent along the route out. And even if it was going to kill me, I was going to get my mind and my freedom back um, no matter what. And that was fucking hard because I had to do a lot of things that my parents will never appreciate, but let's just say they required a moral struggle because if I don't follow along, I'm in deep shit and I'm going to be in danger. That happened many times, but luckily there was always some miracle to get me out of it. I had to take some serious chances to actually follow that out in real life. But again, I was so angry and disillusioned. I'd rather be dead than have this asshole shit in my brain and to um, not get out of that illusion. Good question. A werewolf. Common only, Doug. No problem. Many of us listening have had huge personal problems with life situations. It's comforting to hear your story and your willingness to share it. Thanks, man. And you also sharing with me a werewolf because it's like a two-way flow, as they say in the cult. That's doing the same thing to me. So equally, thanks to, to you guys. Sincerely. Willingness to share. Sincerely than you. Thanks, man. I really fucking appreciate it. And again, the feeling is very mutual. You know, a werewolf, I told you before, you guys before that I wasn't a, I had to corner Martin Landau. I had to corner my friends. I wanted to talk about this because I needed to heal and I knew that I had to actually speak it out. I wasn't going to bury the trauma. I was aware of it right away and I was going to lean into it. So I couldn't have anybody to talk to. I lost all my friends and I wouldn't want to listen to me talk about this shit either because it was incessant and it was excessive, but I was, I couldn't, I couldn't help myself. So Truly, having you guys be here, listen, contribute, relate to the life stories. You don't have to be in Scientology, any cult or abusive relationship or just life itself, right? Having you guys here, man, I had no idea it would be this healing because this is what I fucking needed for year after year to actually just have somebody listen, man. You're going to make me cry, a werewolf. All right, let's just do one more, my friends. As you can tell, my voice is absolutely going out, but what a fucking awesome community to have. OB, where are you to troll, man? You probably already have, but I'm not I'm not going to be able to make it to the bottom of the comments. I promise you we'll we'll get an administrator in here next time. This is impossible to do. I'm way behind, but let's just end off with this. We'll have it sorted next QA. And again, man, I really appreciate you guys being here and hanging out with me, especially it's late at night. Can I say one thing on that too? It does suck that we don't have our British mates because they're eight hours ahead to my understanding. So um, it's actually amazing that we have this many people here anyways because it's kind of late. It's Sunday night, so a lot of people in the U.S. have to work tomorrow. We can still like, still call it dazed after dark, but if you want to go earlier or you want to do it on Saturday or whatever, please let me know because I hate the fact that we're cutting out all the cool people from overseas and shit that just don't have an opportunity to kind of join us. I don't want to make it exclusive, if you know what I mean. Perfect to end off with you, my friend. My mind went AWOL, amazing moniker. I did ask her what the hell it meant one time, and it's pretty cool. Let us know in the comments, my mind, what it means, so I'm not the only one that's in on your secret. My eight-year-old just found the city of PP, Ohio. Is there really a city named that? 
and he couldn't possibly be ponder of him oh prouder of himself is there really a fucking city named pp ohio and if so how did it get named that now you have to leave a comment decode your name my mind let me know if you're just horseshitting me and making me look like a jackass lie by making up a city and if your kiddo was really proud of it and that city exists that's fucking awesome okay my friends like i said without an administrator i'm too far behind it's a good point to end off and let's see um really thanks for joining us ma'am this is the fifth one i'll get more in the swing of it and be able to spruce it up a little bit i think but i'm still testing this out if you guys don't like it it's easy to skip we have plenty of other content but so far it's been kind of a, a special stream at least on this end man but um let me know if you guys are into it or not because i don't want to fucking waste your time and and just bore you with this shit. um what outro would fit tonight's theme so we talked about hollywood let me remove this chat thing here first see i'm a little slow tonight on moving the shit around how about we take a survey here well let me just think okay just to capture like the theme this is the saddest i guess of the outros and i have a couple more that i'm going to add on here because i don't want it to be too repetitive but you're going to see my best friend, Nick, you know, at the end of this fucking thing, not to make you sad. And we talked about Johnny Lewis. We talked about Liz Gales, you know, all these brother, you know, throwing himself out the window. We uh, le- And we talked about Martin Landau. Let's just sort of dedicate this to all the, this is going to sound so corny, but I have to say this because <laughs> this is what motivates me. So when I lost Martin, when I lost Nick, when I see stories like this about um, Johnny Lewis, I, I, I've, I, I've read all of it. And then I experienced it and my parents could care less and my friends around me, right? So there's all these stories that never get told. You know, Nick Lashaway, my best friend, his mom, like my mom, couldn't have cared less that he was gone. It was all about her. So what I'm saying is there's so many voices that either friends that I knew or just reading about ex scientologist stories that are no longer with us from Lisa McPherson on that I felt like I was like living while I was reading it because I was in a really traumatized state of mind. So there's so many voices and so many criminal cases and, and death, suicides, murders um, made to look like suicides, et cetera. So much blood on their hand that this cult has. And these voices, nobody cares. You, they're, in that, they're in and out of the news. And so they like never get to speak. I, I don't know if that makes any sense, but that is really what... Um, maybe why there's some anger i call it passion but that's really what motivates me is that i don't know man someday it'd be nice if if all this actually stopped because the amount of people that have like we just lost lisa marie presley you know and it's just like okay on to the next one i don't know there's something about being able to memorialize these people who never got to say anything um that this cult um just gets away with you know decade after decade after decade So sorry for the long ramble, but this fits the, um, I don't know, the tone of what we talked about tonight. I'm sure we'll see you tomorrow, my friends. There's plenty more videos to come. I just have to get to them. And thanks for joining us, man. We'll see you soon.